Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank God for the honor and privilege to be able to open the sacred book once again. We are in the book of Genesis, chapter 4. I'm going to read a couple of verses uh, from there. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 16, and then I'm going to read verse number 26 for you as we look at the topic in his presence god the csi the worshiper murderer wanderer and caller we're going to look at the life of cain and we're going to see him we're going to see the boys growing up and we're going to see them as worshiping worshipers we're going to see cain becoming a murderer then graduates to a wanderer and men begin to call upon the name of god so we're going to look at the scripture in genesis which is the book of beginnings we see that god has instituted the family in chapter 3 god had brought uh, unto adam his son his created son he had created him from the dust of the ground and he pulled his out of the rib he fashioned the woman and brought the woman to Adam that she would be his helpmeet and he would uh, they would have this uh, wonderful life in the garden of Eden paradise uh, but the Bible says that sin entered the world in chapter 3 for the serpent showed up to tempt them and to deceive them in chapter 4 we begin to understand that God has uh, blessed this family and the Bible says and Adam was intimate with his wife Eve and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I have had a male child with the Lord's help. Then she also gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel became a shepherd of flocks, but Cain worked the ground. In the course of time, Cain presented some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also presented an offering, some of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but he did not have regard or respect for Cain and his offering. Cain was furious and he looked, he looked despondent or downcast. The Lord said to Cain, why are you furious? And why do you look despondent? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. Listen to that. Sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. Cain was talking with him. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him while they were in the field. Cain said to his brother, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, look at that. Where is Abel, your brother? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper or guardian? Then he said, what have you done? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed alienated from the ground that opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood you have shed if you work the ground it will never again give you its yield it will not yield to you you will be a restless wanderer on the earth but Cain answered the Lord my punishment is too great to bear since you are banishing me today from the soil of the earth I must hide myself from your presence and become a restless wanderer on the earth whoever finds me will kill me verse 15 says then the Lord replied to him in that case whoever kills Cain whoever kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over and he placed a mark on Cain so that whoever found him would not kill him then Cain went out watch verse 16 Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod or the nomads east of Eden verse 25 a tragic uh, story a tragedy but in verse number 26 the Bible says that a son was born to Seth Adam and Eve had another son and named him Enosh at that time people began to call 
on the name of God. People or mankind began to call, men began to call on the name of God. Father, your word is already blessed. It is settled in heaven. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let the anointing and the presence of Almighty God rest upon your sacred word. They are ancient words, ever potent, ever powerful, ever true. We thank you for what you're about to do through this message, God, that lives out there, anyone hearing this message, that you would put a mark upon their lives, God, distinguishing them, separating them unto purpose and destiny, Father. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that the word will take root in our lives, that we will be a true worshiper today and every time we set to worship you, God, it will ascend out of our spirits, we thank you, God, as we present our bodies uh, a living sacrifice unto you. Father, we thank you to be in your presence is heaven. Uh, to be in your presence is life-changing. To be in the atmosphere of where you dwell, God, is heaven. And Father, nothing else matters to us but your Shekinah glory, your presence, your power, and your purpose. We, we are thanking you in advance for what you're going to do through this message in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will position ourselves in your presence and not so much looking for the gifts, but the presence of Almighty God. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let your word uh, take root and let it accomplish all that you would have uh, set out to accomplish today. Bless every hearer right now. Bless their families. Bless them in their going out and coming in. Bless them, God. Let, the, let this word synchronize in their spirits, God. Father, that you are the great CSI investigator. That justice uh, comes from you. That vengeance uh, belongs to you. Thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do in and through our lives. Thank you for putting a seal. Thank you for putting a mark upon us uh, that we are yours, O oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. The Bible says uh, that uh, Adam and Eve had uh, were intimate. Uh, the first uh, uh, marriage that took place, God brought Eve unto Adam. And the Bible says in chapter 4 that uh, they were intimate. And the Bible says uh, that they gave birth uh, uh, to a son named Cain. He was the firstborn. Then came the second son named uh, Abel. Understand that Cain was a keeper of the ground and Abel was a keeper of flocks. He was a shepherd boy. Uh, remember, God would use the sh shepherds in a great way. But this time, we begin to see that they were taught worship by their uh, by their father, and they would not present. They would not come empty-handed unto God. And and the time had come uh, to present sacrifices unto God. And they brought of their their sacrileges unto God. They brought of their occupation. Uh, Cain brought of the the ground, and Abel uh, brought the Lord a first uh, uh, fruit offering, uh, the firstling of the, the the animals and the bible says that um, he brought the fat portions meaning that he prepared this offering he he this offering was uh in his mind that he's gonna give god uh, his very best uh, understand that i believe in my heart that cain was angry and wroth uh, because he was reckless in his uh sacrifice unto god it, it is uh, to me god would forgive him but but is the attitude that Cain would have approached God with. Uh, understand that sometimes in this life is it's not what you're saying, but it's how you're saying it uh, unto God. And, and God wants us to have a uh, honor and respect unto him in the body of christ we need to reference almighty god we need to show that level of appreciation 
to what God has done in our lives. So, so the broad of the worship, remember the word worship is uh, proskinio, to, to prostrate and to kiss the king, lest he be angry. It is giving God your very best. Worship God in spirit and in truth. I, I want you to know that worship is not a song. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is an attitude. Uh, worship is what you do with your time, your talent, your treasures. Uh, as you begin to worship uh, God, God is a spirit uh, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit uh, and in truth understand that God uh, is a spirit being and we must approach God uh, in a spiritual uh, dimension that my spirit uh, soars with God. God is not concerned how great you can sing or how well you can pull a note. Uh, God is interested in your heart condition. Uh, for the Bible says, God, your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. Proverbs 4 and verse number 23. God, your heart uh, with all diligence for out of it flows the very issues of life. Uh, now what you're seeing uh, manifest in your life is a result of what you have been thinking about. Uh, uh, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Uh, understand it is it's from your heart uh, that you give God your very best. Uh, and God is looking that uh, God is inspecting the offering and God sees them. Uh, and the Bible says God had respect unto Abel. Uh, Abel uh, was honored by God. Uh, when God respects you, my goodness, that, that that is uh, that is what you're after. It, it doesn't matter if people respect you or people leave you or bought you, but it, it matters what God thinks about your life. Uh, and God had respect unto Abel and his sacrifice. All I need you to do is to give God your very best, uh, to honor God and to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Uh, that is the highest calling. Uh, we are called unto God. Uh, we have been drawn into his presence. Uh, uh, to, to sacrifice unto God. Uh, the Bible says in uh, Romans 12 chapter that I beseech you therefore brethren, uh, brethren that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable act of spiritual worship or act of service. Uh, understand how you present yourself present yourself unto God uh, they presented the sacrifice uh, but God was not so much concerned understand this uh, that burnt offerings uh, and, and sacrifices is not what God is after God was looking at the presentation of these boys uh, God was looking at the presentation of their lives uh, and God I want you to understand that it is not the gift uh, but it's the vessel that must be sanctified and meet for the master's use. So in the Old Testament, they would bring uh, the rams and the lambs and the bullocks and the, and they would sacrifice unto God. In the New Testament, it says, present your bodies a, a living a sacrifice. Understand that you are the sacrifice of Almighty God laid by the altar of Almighty God. And, and the time came that he was wrought with God. He was angry angry with God, uh, but his anger with God will now be manifested in taking revenge to his brother. And the Bible says he talked with Abel, his brother, and he asked him, he said, uh, he talked with him. Uh, maybe Abel thought we're going to have a great hunt today. Uh, we're going to do something in the field today. But he attacked him in the field. Uh, I want you to understand that the enemy will attack you uh, wherever you open yourself to. Uh, in the King James Version, he talked with him uh, and then he struck him. Uh, I don't know if he struck him in the head. Uh, little is said in the text, but the Bible says he killed him. Uh, could you imagine the blood uh, uh, gushing out of his head or his body? Uh, I want you to know, he says unto Cain, uh, that sin, if thou doest well, uh, thou wilt be accepted. Uh, but remember that sin is crouching at the door. I want you to see the picture of this lion, uh, that he's crouching at the door the door of your heart. Uh, that lion would wait. Uh, uh, that viper would wait to pounce on you uh, without you looking. Uh, the lion is lurking and he's camouflaged himself uh, and he waits until that deer is separated uh, from the pack uh, and he pounces on that animal. Understand that sin lies
lies at the door crouching he's trying to sneak into your life and he says unto Cain if thou was would have done good thou shall be accepted if thou do as well but sin lieth at the door and his desire is to have you I'm reminded of a text in the gospel of St. Luke Simon Simon Satan has a desire to sift you as wheat uh, but I've prayed for you and when thou art converted strengthen the brethren I want you to know that Satan's desire is to sift you to rock your boat uh, to rock your life uh, he wants to shake the boat so much uh, that you would sin uh, that you would jump overboard uh, that you would give up in this life uh, that hate and anger and resentment will be built up in your life uh, that it doesn't matter you will kill anybody you would slay a man that's why evil is prevalent in the land. Many people are angry with God, are upset with God, and they are taking it out on fellow human beings. The sons and daughters, the young ladies are being victimized. And God, the Bible says, God stepped down in the scene. We begin to see the worshiper. Now we see the murderer. Understand that Cain drew him out into the field and struck him. And the Bible says God stepped down. I'm, I'm telling you this, that God is the great CSI, the investigator, forensic faith. He, he finds uh, what others would, uh, would not pick up on. Could you imagine Adam and Eve looking for Abel, their son? And they could not find him for, for Cain may have covered him up. Uh, have you ever covered anything? Many people are cover, covering stuff and covering things. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that God came down. God sees everything and he's... He, he, he talks with Cain and says, where is Abel thy brother? And he says, am I my brother's keeper? God asked him, where is your brother? He asked Adam, where are you? He was hiding behind the trees. They had made temporal coverings uh, for their skin. They had sinned against God. Remember, sin will take you further than you ever expected. Acts the prodigal son, he took... Uh, and father's inheritance and he drifted far into a, a strange land and the bible says when he hit rock bottom and the pig spent uh, that he came to his senses and said how many hired servants uh, that my father has i'm gonna go back home to my father and the bible says he drifted away sin will cause you to drift away from the presence of god sin is missing the mark sin is a small word but it spells disaster i want you to understand that S-I-N is a very little word, but it spells disaster. Sin, uh, one, one moment, one drifting with sin. The Bible says that take heed, brethren, to the things that you have heard, lest you drift away from the truth uh, and drift away from the things that you have heard. Sin will take you far. Sin will cause you to do some things that you are not, you would like to do, but because you have started practicing that, sin wraps over you. So the murderer, look at the downward uh, a spiral effect in his life. Uh, that from a worshiper, uh, he is uh, having a false sense of worshiper, and now he becomes a murderer. Cain murders his brother, cold-blooded murderer. And the Bible says that God said unto Cain, what have you done? I hear the voice of thy brother's blood. God hears on a level that we cannot hear. God sees the pain that you're going through. God said unto Moses, I see the affliction. I hear the cries that the taskmasters have put on the Hebrew people, the Hebrews and the people of God. Come now, I will send you to deliver them out of the hand of Pharaoh. I want you to know that God sees your pain. Pain. God feels your pain. Everything is open and naked and exposed before God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12 and 13. Uh, understand that God, everything is open before Him in whom we must give an account. I want you to understand this walk with God. I must give an account unto God. You may not give an account to people, but you have to give an account to God. All of us will stand before God in the beamer seat, the judgment seat of God. And we, we will be judged of things that we have done in this life, in this body, what we say and what we do. And understand God put a mark upon Cain for, for he says, thy, brother, thy brother's blood uh, cries out from the ground. And Cain says, my punishment is too much to bear. 
after he had killed him, he turned his back on his brother. He turned his back on Abel. But God, killing Cain would not suffice. Killing Cain would not suffice. Justice belongs to God and, and vengeance belongs un, unto God. And, and, and God says, I will repay. There's a time coming when mankind will feel the wrath of Almighty God because of the innocent lives that they have taken. God says that I will place a mark upon him. I will put my signature upon him uh, that killing Cain would not cut it. Uh, God will allow him to live uh, and forever live in remorse uh, and tormenting the Bible's uh, torment uh, that he wanders away from the presence of God. In verse number 16, it says that Cain went out from the presence of God and dwells in the land of Nod. The Bible says the Nod was a place east of Eden. It was nomads. It was where you would never be settling, but always wandering from place to place, wandering in your mind, wandering in your thoughts, and never settling down to understand that God is the one that you are to seek and to serve. In his presence, there's a peace. In his presence, there's joy. In his presence, there's pleasure understand that Cain slew his brother because his own works were evil. And God said unto him that I will have to banish you. I put a mark upon you. Brothers and sisters, we are sealed by the power and the presence of God. The, Hebrew, the Greek word arabon, which means uh, to set a mark or seal uh, that when it is only broken when you reach the destination to uh, the arabon, uh, that that seal uh, are marked with the blood of Jesus Christ. He said that uh, I hear the blood of Abel. Abel's blood cries out justice and mercy. I, I need justice. Uh, they need justice. Uh, and God stepped down the CSI of heaven. The God, the crime scene investigator, stepped down and he says that I will give justice. I will give justice how I choose to give justice. And God put a mark upon him that all may see him and knew and know that Cain had killed his brother Abel. Brothers and sisters, a day, a time is coming. We are on the verge of a time, a dispensation where God is going to call us to be accountable unto Him. That we must not wander away from the presence of Almighty God. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God and He will draw nigh unto you. I want you to hear that. Draw nigh unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. For our adversary Satan is like a roaring lion seeking somebody to destroy. Uh, the wicked will not rest until they destroy some life. Uh, that's why I want you to be vigilant and diligent uh, and look at what you're doing. Uh, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence uh, for out of it flows the issues of life. Men began to call upon the name of God. The Bible says uh, Seth was born in place of Abel. God gave the Adam and Eve another son in, in the place of Abel. And his name was Seth. And the Bible said Seth had a son and he called him Enosh. And men began to call upon the name of God. Brothers and sisters, God is expecting us to call his name. Call on the name of Yahweh. Call on the name Jehovah God. Call on the name of Elohim. Call on the name of our God. Jesus Christ is call. When Peter was sinking, he called on the name of God. Lord, save me. And the Bible says God stretched out his hand and saved him and pulled him up back. And they went back to the boat. I want you to know that God has placed a mark upon us, a seal of redemption. I rebuke every spirit, every foul spirit over your life, every spirit of murder and wandering and drifting here, there and everywhere. To drift away from the presence of God is critical and detrimental to your spiritual development. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life, eternal life. Forever Cain will be a fugitive and a vagabond. He would wander through life forever building a city. He switched occupations and began to build a city and he would name it after his son. He was so occupied with the things of this world that he forgot God. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that we must place high value 
in the presence of God. There is a meeting place. There is a place to dwell with God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to know that God is calling us to dwell in His presence. And Moses says, if your presence is not going, I'm not going. It's in His presence there is life. In His presence there is assurance and instruction. If your presence is not going, I'm not going. Lord, I need your presence. Here comes Jesus. When the disciples saw Jesus, they thought it was a ghost. But it's the presence of God. And Peter says, Lord, bid me to come. And he begins to walk on the water. And he calls on God. When he found himself in trouble, he called on God. I want you to know that God is available. God's line is open and that God says that call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, things that you have not even dreamed of. The mark of Cain. I don't want us to go from worshiping God to having a form of worship, a religious, a religion, a form of worship, a false sense of worship. Too many people serving God with their lips, uh, but not with their heart. Uh, all you have is lip service. Uh, these people draw nigh uh, uh, to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, said God. God says the people draw nigh unto me with their lips. Don't just give God lip service, give God life service. Don't just give him lip service, give him your life service. Don't be a murderer in the presence of God. Don't be a wanderer. Be a caller upon the name of God. Call upon the name of God and he will answer you. And God will lead you into that right path, into that righteous path. I pray and ask God to put a mark, a hedge of protection over every hearer right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, mark us, God. Put your signature upon us. Seal us unto the day of redemption, God in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, that we will not be like Cain. We will not have Cain's religion, that he rose up to, to slay his brother because his own works were evil. We pray God protect us uh, and shield us uh, and cover us with the precious blood uh, of your son. Uh, uh, let there be a blood mark upon us, God, uh, that when the enemy comes, uh, that they're going to see the blood of Jesus uh, and they shall leave us. Uh, they shall be rebuked uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. In his presence, there's life. Uh, in his presence, there's sustenance. Uh, I want you to know that God loves you with an everlasting love. Guard your heart, brothers and sisters, for out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your heart with all diligence. Father, bless every here and now. Let your words synchronize in their spirit. And Father, may we call upon your name. And men began to call upon the name of God. If men in our society will call upon God and surrender their lives unto God, call upon God and he's going to uh, save you. Believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and, and thou shalt be saved. That God wants you to, God wants to come into your heart. And God wants to live in you, to be your savior, to be your king. Father, I pray the kingdom of God to invade every hearer right now. Let the presence of God fill their rooms, fill their living rooms, their kitchen, wherever they are positioned right now. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, fill our, our homes with the presence of Almighty God. Fill our hearts with your presence. We lift up our hearts unto you, God. Give us a heart of worship that we will worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, take all the honor, Father. All the honor and all the glory belongs to you. You are the great CSI. You step down, you're dusting for prints. Uh, and what, you, what they have left behind, uh, God says, I am doing a, a search. I'm searching out the land. And I'm going to bless you. I'm going to dust for fingerprints. I'm going to dust and I'm going to see. And God is dusting out Cain and trying to give him a second chance. But he doesn't want that chance. He says, am I my brother's keeper? Brothers and sisters, let us be our brother's keeper instead of our brother's killer and our sister's killer. Let us be our brother's keeper. Keep them. Uh, God says, I'll keep you. He that keepeth Israel uh, does not slumber nor sleep. He that keepeth thee. The Lord will keep you. 
whom we have been kept. It has been kept in heaven, reserved in heaven until the day of redemption. I want you to know that God is keeping us. God is sustaining us. God is shielding us and protecting us. The keeping power of Almighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus, keep us that we may dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. We give you thanks and praise for what you're about to do in our lives. Take all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, Father. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.